youth tear upon the core of blasphemy follow your prophet and on evil make a victory let our righteousness be a role model to our children making new generations of believers decently upbringing with parents as an example as gems we shape them fearing only Allah devoting our lives for him Bismillah assalamu alaikum peace Welcome to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam Allah. Sheikh, uh, in the previous episodes we've been discussing the, the gap between marriage and not being married, dating. I think we had one episode where we said, what, uh, dating, mating, and waiting? Mm -hmm. That's right? Yes. I, I think uh, today I'm interested in discussing uh, the in this general theme, the gap between staying married and divorce. Is that something we should talk about? Well, absolutely, Omar. One of the things that uh, has really affected the world population today is the subject of divorcing. Mm. On the one hand, we have people who are in irreconcilable situations. This is how it's described in the legal parlance when we're talking from the lawyer's point of view presenting to the judge. They're in a, a, a situation which is irreconcilable. Mm. Irreconcilable situation. That's what they're talking about. Now, what do they do? Now, on the other hand, when there is divorce, though, look at how it divides up not just the two, but their families as well, their surrounding friends, circle of friends, the children, if there are any, and there is an impact on a community when there's a divorce. Right. One divorce has a huge impact on a community. And then when you have multiple divorces, and very often when a person gets one divorce, they have a difficulty in their next marriage as well. Mm. So there might be another divorce. And in some cases, two or three divorces. In our own family, one of my family members was divorced eight times. SubhanAllah. And, no, seven. One of them died. I'll take mm. it back. <laughs> but uh, what we're talking about, though, is the impact that it has. So people feel like, uh, I don't trust this person you know, to be married to my sister or my daughter because they've just been divorced here or more than once. And there is a stigma that goes with divorce. Mm. So sometimes, especially for the woman, she feels like if I get a divorce, I'm going to be labeled in the community. Mm. I'm a threat now to the other ladies. Or I'm labeled as a, some kind of troublemaker, potential problem, somebody that can't handle a husband, somebody who is maybe got something wrong with her. So a lot of women don't even want to entertain this thought, even though it's irreconcilable, mm. but they don't want to entertain the subject of divorce because in their community or their country, they're considered an outcast. Mm. And in some cases, it's so bad that I have heard in India, for instance, that a woman would be put away. Allah. And uh, this is pretty serious. And then we should maybe even introduce the subject about remarriages as well. Mm. What happens after a divorce? Right. What about getting remarried? Some of these things. Mm. What about somebody that uh, is curious about what are the rights of, of for example, a, a woman who just got divorced? I mean, is that a complicated issue? or? Before we even go to that, Oma, what about the, the subject of divorce itself? Mm. Does Islam permit divorce? Important question. Yeah. Well, we find from the Old Testament uh, that what they have today indicates that a man could divorce his wives, mm. but it doesn't say the woman could. Mm. It looks like he could. But it definitely in the New Testament, no. Right. There is no divorce. That right. does not, that's not going to happen. Catholic Church still is firm on that subject today. Which I find strange because a lot of Christians, I mean, maybe not the majority, but you you find if you go to any church, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from a Christian background, you're from a Christian background, a lot of people there that have had divorces. Now, they even have, you know, you have a, a youth group, a young married group, and some even have 
a divorce group. Right. Yeah. And you're, you're like, how does that work? SubhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let's look at Islam. Never mind what others say. What does Islam say? Islam has a whole entire chapter, surah, called Atalaq, hmm. the divorce. So not only in this chapter, but throughout the Quran, talking about rights. We've mentioned this in our other programs. Mm. Yeah, Islam is about rights, but it's also about limits. It's not just that you're going to get your rights, but the limits that you can go to and then you stop. And then the rights that other people have, but then where they have to stop. So there's rights and there's limits in Islam. A man has the right to divorce his wife if, and then there are conditions. Otherwise he can't. So it can't be a whim that he's just saying, I don't want to be married to her anymore. I don't have to give a reason. <laughs> no, you have a reason. Right. And it better be a, a strong reason in Islam. Otherwise, he doesn't have that right. Second of all, the woman. Can she divorce? And the answer is absolutely. She can. But when? If certain conditions exist, if there are irreconcilable situations, according to Islam, not according to your nafs or your lust, no. But if there are things that just can't be resolved, then she can divorce. SubhanAllah. Shall we mention one? Please. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, wanted Zainab to marry Zayd. Mm. And he advised them to get married. And they did. But she came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, later, and she said, you know, have, if you weren't the one who insisted me to get married to him, I wouldn't have married him. Mm. But it was to show that Zayd, who is his, he called adopted son, right. is not his real son. Why? Because you could never marry someone who has been married to your own son. Mm. And she wanted to divorce him and marry the Prophet. SubhanAllah. And the Prophet told her, no, no, just stay with that. You know, because he felt like, oh, this might be a scandal. Right. You know? But then Allah revealed in the verses in Al-Hasab, the Confederates, talking about you are concealing what's inside of you, what you, what you know. Let them get divorced and then you marry her. Mm. This is plus or minus. I'm giving the, the tafsir more. Yeah, the, the explanation behind it. Right. So... She divorced her husband, and she even talks about why. She said, I was disgusted even to look at him. SubhanAllah. I don't even want to look at this man. Mm. I see him coming or going. I just can't stand to even look at this man. I don't want to be married to him. So this is a legitimate excuse. If she mm. says, I'm just fed up with this guy. I can't take him. Mm. That's it. I don't even want to see him. Then she is allowed to uh, sue for divorce. Mm. And she doesn't have to pronounce it any special number of times. She would go to the Islamic leader, imam, whatever, as Zainab did in this case, and present her case, and he would say, all right, then you're divorced. But then there's a waiting period of four mm. months in Islam. They have to wait for this period of time. And, and what's the purpose for that waiting period? Well, one of the things the scholars tell us about the waiting period uh, there's a waiting period after uh, death, too. If a woman is a widow or if her husband dies, there's a waiting period here, too. And this waiting period is so that in case she is pregnant, mm. so that this other man doesn't assume right. the fatherhood of this child who is not really his legitimate child. Again, so that the child gets the rights of his father for any inheritance or anything like this to know who his father is. Mm. And be named properly, too. He has to be named for his father. Mm. So, anyway, this is explained in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir uh, re regarding this uh, subject in Surah Al-Hujurat. Mm. Even though Al-Hujurat is only 18 verses, chapter 49, and it's not really about his uh, divorce or marriage and rights or that, but there's so much explanation there that ties it together. Anyway. So what we find out now is a woman can get a divorce, initiated. A man can initiate it. But for men, now, they say a man can just say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and walk out the door, mm -hmm. and that's it. Right. Okay, is that a legitimate divorce? The Prophet Sallallahu said in a, it's a hadith with, with explanation in al Baluga Maram, where the Prophet Sallallahu said, if somebody does this, then the divorce is real. She's divorced from him, yes, mm. but he's not from us. Mm. Who did this is not from us. This is not our way. 
Oh. It's not the Islamic way, but the divorce counts. Mm. Why? Because there's another party involved. The woman is involved. She's divorced now from this man. She's ready to go on with her life without this guy. Because basically a man that would do that's a creep anyway. <laughs> right. He's not, yeah. he's not a well-balanced individual. Right. Maybe he's on some kind of, you know, <laughs> medicine or something. But this doesn't uh, give rights to a woman right. to, to act like that. So what are some valid reasons for divorce, you know, just in general? Or, or you know, is that something we can talk about? When, as we said, that a person just looks at somebody and says, they're disgusting, I can't mm. take it, okay? Which means that in the case of a lot of prearranged marriages, we find that today. Right. And these prearranged marriages, as we discussed before, are not from Islam. These mm. are from culture. Right. And if a person's in that, they have that right to divorce. Mm. But they should think about it. Because if you divorce that person, how will you go to uh, any other marriage now? Right. How? Right. Because everybody, when they get married, they want to have somebody who's never been married before. Mm. A boy, he wants a virgin. A girl, she wants a man that doesn't have all this quote-unquote experience hmm. and being compared to other people in right. an intimate way is it, it's not an attractive uh, premise to consider no we all would like to marry one who's never been married before hmm. and also they don't have children you know somebody who's been married they may have children hmm. they could, and some people call that baggage <laughs> treat right. a child like you know extra baggage here right. so we as Muslims want to encourage people to be careful when they get married and then try to work it out so they can stay married. Right. Now, there's a verse in the Quran in chapter 4, verse 35, telling us what to do when a man and a woman are at outs with each other. They've got a problem now. They're mm -hmm. fighting and she's saying, you know, you take your stuff and go down the road. He said, you go down, you go back to your parents. You, you go, you know, and they start this thing. Well, when you get to this, it tells you, now appoint somebody from his family and appoint somebody from her family and all of you come together and now let's work this thing out mm. and then accept the arbitration of the families. That's and if they say, you know, you're treating her awful hard, you need to spend more time at home or in some cases you need to spend less time at home, you right. know, sitting on your computer all the time and uh, ma'am, you need to do something besides these TV dinners, you know. <laughs> He's tired of these pop-ups, you know. So kind of let's work it out here. You do this and you do that. Let's mutually agree. Can we do that? And then whenever everybody agrees to that, you go back into the marriage situation and, and most likely it's going to work out. SubhanAllah. Now, Sheikh, we have about a minute left. So if you could, I just wanted to ask you real quick, what would we say to somebody that is uh, rushing into a divorce? You know, just... First thing somebody does wrong, I'm ready to divorce you. Absolutely, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody right. because of the ramifications that come out of it. There's, it's so easy to say something, but then so difficult to deal with it later. Mm. It's very, very hard because after a divorce, a person could look back and say, you know, that person wasn't all that bad. Mm. Especially if they marry somebody else and say, this person's even worse. Right. Wow, I didn't know how good I had it with this person. Mm. I just thought, I thought... So take consultation, uh, sh shura, it's right. called shura. Make consultation amongst yourselves before you do that. Talk to your family, talk to the other person's family, see what kind of ramifications are going to come out of this right. thing. Remember rights. Everybody has rights. Mm, it's that, that's very, very important. Well, we're going to take a quick break right now, uh, and we'll be right back, so don't go anywhere. You're watching Closing the Gap. Fearing only Allah, devoting our lives for Him. Many people trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but later on they get off track what is the reason behind that unity is a result it's not a cover-up we have to be united from inside and Allah made this clear in the Quran when he said
fearing only Allah, devoting our lives for Him. Bismillah. Welcome back to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us Sheikh Yusuf Esta. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sheikh, we're talking today about the, the gap between staying married and getting a divorce. And I'm wondering in this last segment of the show if we could start getting into what does Islam have to say about divorce? What are the rights of people who are divorced? What are the stipulations to a divorce? And so on. If you could just comment on that for us. When I first came into Islam, I was very affected by the fact that uh, I was myself in a situation that the wife I had at that time wanted to talk about divorce. Mm. This was even before us coming to Islam. We uh, had a discussion about this. Now all of a sudden I'm still facing this. I thought Islam was going to be the solution for both of us because mm. some of the problems we had were dealing in religion. Right. Her being a born-again Christian and me being a, a, a little bit more... Uh, uh, in another area of Christianity. but So I thought both of us being in Islam it was going to solve the problems, but it didn't. Mm. And so here we had the subject again. So I started listening to what, what does Islam say? And some of the Muslims were telling me one thing, some would tell me something else. And one of the things that kept coming up over and over is how much Allah hates divorce. Mm. I kept hearing this, Allah hates divorce. And then I heard there was um, in Islam a saying that amongst all the things that are halal, Allah hates divorce the most. Of all the things that are permitted, this is the thing that Allah hates the most. And then I came to find out though later on, that's not really a hadith. No, subhanAllah. That isn't actually the hadith. Although we would say, of all the things that are permitted, it certainly is something that everybody is uh, affected by. Hmm. There's no doubt about that. That uh, goes across the board regardless of your religion. We know that. It is something that has the most negative effects regardless, you know, in a society, in a family. So yes, there, that, that exists, but let's don't say it's a hadith if oh, it's not a right. real hadith of the prophet. Peace be upon him. Now, what I went through, I'm, I hope and pray nobody else goes through. Hmm. Because of a lot of um, misconceptions that I had and some very underhanded things that some other people were doing. And by the way, when somebody's new to Islam, they have a tendency to want to trust all the Muslims and believe they're angels. They're not. Right. They're human beings just like anybody else. Right. You know, and just because they say, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean that this is somebody that's got your best interest at heart. Right. Let's leave that at that. But what does Islam say? Divorce is a legal contract being broken in Islam. Just like you go in the courts, that's what they're talking about. Mm. But how do you deal with the heart? The heart, when a woman came into this marriage relationship, her, she gave her whole heart to this man. Mm. But this man has done this and that and broken her heart now. So she wants to take some revenge against him. I'm going to hurt him like he hurt me. I'll divorce him. But then who will really get hurt? Maybe she'll hurt him for a while. But now where will she be? And what will happen next? Right. And can she tolerate this man and put up with it? Or should she say something? And if she threatens him with divorce, maybe he will divorce her. I mean, these are things that why we keep saying Shura, Shura, go back to the Quran where it says, Wa umrahum shura bainahum. Make consultation amongst yourselves. Bring your families into this. This mm -hmm. is not a matter of what you say in, in the West. They say, That's none of your business. It's my, I'm your mother. No, I don't want to hear that. I'm your father. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's not like that. Mm -hmm. it, this is a family thing. Right. F marriage. Coming together. This is families coming together. Don't be in a hurry to break all that up mm -hmm. because down the road, a lot of people can be hurt. But at the same time, there could be abuse, physical abuse. Mm -hmm. Should she uh, tolerate this uh, abusing that he's hitting her, hurting her? Or maybe she's hitting him. Right. We have that too. You know, yeah. women have frying pans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they can sneak up behind you. Right. So, uh, but there are all types of abuse too. And again, we go back to let's have these meetings of the family. Bring it out. Talk about it. Make the other person face 
what they're doing. Right. Deal with it. Try to correct that. Because just because she divorces him doesn't mean he won't do it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And just because he divorces her doesn't mean she won't continue doing X, Y, Z on her own. So it's not going to solve problems. Divorces very often cause more problems than they solve. Mm -hmm. But they are acceptable in Islam. A person has the right to contract about their own marriage without other people mandating to them. And a person has the right to divorce and get out of that contract without other people mandating to them. Mm. They have these rights to get in and out of the relationship. If you want to know the legal term, yes, it, you have niqah and you have talaq. There you are. And mm. you can choose on either side. But common sense tells you be careful going in and for sure be careful before you go out. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. SubhanAllah. What about, uh, you know, because this is an issue people are going to raise, uh, the rights of a, of a divorced woman. Does she have any rights from her ex-husband? Support and uh, so on? Support, right. Some have said that a woman is to be maintained for a year mm. after divorce. Others say that she's to be maintained until she finds another husband mm. or someone to support her. Others have, they have different opinions on how that should be done. Mm. But for sure, a man has a responsibility. This is laid out in the Quran, depending on a couple of things. One thing we didn't talk about in our mating, dating, and waiting <laughs> <laughs> story, well, that perhaps that we should have put in there, but we'll mention it now. And that is that a man and a woman can live together in Islam, they can, mm. and then they can leave and still be considered not married. Did you know how? SubhanAllah, how's that? Because they can make their niqah, they can be together but never have intercourse. Uh. If they don't have intercourse, if they stay together for three days or five days, a week, a month, but they don't have intercourse, in other words, a man does not enter into the woman mm. in this way, then they decide, well, we don't really think this will work. They can get out of this without divorce. Mm, like an annulment kind of deal. It just doesn't count. Right, uh. it doesn't, it's not there. It's not on the record. She's still a virgin, isn't she? Right. Yeah. And he's still a virgin, if he was, or you know, if they weren't married before. So this doesn't count. Mm. And they're now free to marry somebody, and it starts as a first marriage. Mm. But I think in the case uh, where somebody would ask and say, well, have you ever been married before well I was married but not married what do you mean well we never had intercourse mm. and we decided it didn't work so it was a you know you want to use the English word annulled but it just voided right like a voided check doesn't nobody can cash it right okay uh, but to come back to the situation when we're talking about divorce it is important that you know what you're getting out of you know mm. when we say getting into <laughs> you need to know what you're getting out of because you whenever you get out you're into something else. Right. Just like going out a door. Mm. Okay, you're out, but now you're in the outdoors, aren't you? Right. So you realize where you're going before you move. Mm. Uh, now, we mentioned uh, the episode between the Prophet ﷺ and uh, Zayd, Zayd and so and on. And Zainab, yeah. Are there any other episodes or things in the Quran, uh, you know, from Hadith or Quran that talk about divorce? For example... Uh, I want to say there's something in Surah Yusuf, some situation between Yusuf and his, the wife of somebody, something going on. I, I, these are. This is from Tafsir. Ah. Okay. okay. But let us come to something. I think is important too. What about widows? Ah. We didn't talk about right. this. The Prophet, peace be upon him, married Khadija mm. when she was 40 and he was 25. Right. Did you know that? Yeah, I did actually. All right. Now, did you know she was married before? And now I did not. And did you know her husband died? SubhanAllah. And then she got married again. SubhanAllah. And her husband died. SubhanAllah. So she was twice widowed. Ah, mashallah. Well, can you marry a widow? Well, the Prophet ﷺ did that. Right. Now, can you get married to somebody who's been divorced? And the Prophet ﷺ did that. Right. So, because he's our example, so if he married somebody that was divorced, then we can do that. Right. And he married somebody who was a widow, and he did that mm. more than once. He had a, a, another wife who was widowed. And can you marry a woman who is very old, even beyond the age of wanting to be intimate? She doesn't want sex. Mm. Can you marry her? Yes, he did that. Right. One of his wives, he didn't have sex with her. Right. But he, he was married. This meant they could be alone together. Right. They could be close to each other. He could kiss her, do what he wants to do. Right. And she uh, was free to be close and intimate with him. But she just said, give my night 
to Aisha. Right. Mashallah. That was uh, Sauda, right? Ah. Uh, actually, um, he had uh, several wives, but a lot of people, they want to put this stigma that he was some kind of sex maniac or something. Right. It, it wasn't that case at all, because this was to show you who you could marry, who you couldn't marry, right. and how to treat them. Right. One of the key things I think we should look at, I want to talk about Muhammad, peace be upon him, is when he said, the best of you are the best to your wives. Mm. And I'm the best of you to my wives. Mm, subhanAllah. Very important because you must take care of them. You right. must give your wife the highest regard, respect, honor, dignity. She is not your slave. Mm. She is not your bondwoman. Right. Didn't, didn't, isn't it true that the Prophet Muhammad, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to like mend his own shoes and wa help her with the housework? As a matter of fact, thing. we did speak about that in another mm. program, but yes, yeah, he was very responsible for doing his share of the work around the house. He mm. didn't come in and expect her to just you know, wait on him hand right. and foot. Right. Well, unfortunately, Sheikh, uh, that's all the time we have today. We thank you for being with us, uh, and we hope to see our viewers next time, inshallah. Until then, I'm your host, Omar Dunlap, wishing you peace. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, youth, tear upon the core of blasphemy. Follow your prophet, and on evil make a victory. Let our righteousness be a role model to our children Making new generations of believers Decently upbringing With parents as an example As gems we shape them Fearing only Allah Devoting our lives for Him